little note here. Cloud9 have opted to start on the T side of their opponent's right. map pick. Now, that's a bold statement, isn't it? You don't see that every day. First map of the tournament, why not? Set the pace, get stuck in. And that's exactly what they're doing towards Banana now. Axel and Shiro just feeding out the proximity of the areas, detecting any CTs on the other side. And they need to be careful. There's actually three CTs stacked towards that B bomb site. So going through the motions here, we have got Breeze with the dual elites ready to strike, but unfortunately destroyed by Hobbit's Glock. Yeah. And he's upgraded. Yeah, that's going to be a nice pair of dual leads for Hobbit. Not bad, is it? No, isn't it? And it's still a bunch of utility as they pivot back towards A quite swiftly. Moto smoked off pit as well. And encroaching on this site, Neilan has an opportunity to still them out here. And he's whiffed a couple of shots. Snaffany. Stays alive towards the boiler, and now it's all on Cirque, the big man in question right now. Yanko and Kassab with lots to say, but can he step up? Back of the side, back of the box, and he'll go down. One will be planted, and maybe, just maybe, EG should consider a save. Well, this was the three-man stack towards B, as mentioned, so you might be onto something there, Chad. It's Anila now falling back, but setting up a smoke, presumably for the pit position. Deploys it. Looks like they might be going for it. Don't have the kit right now, but the flashbang is available. So trying to isolate the players towards the bomb site itself. And the swing will be coming around. But remember, the dual elites are in play, but the flashbang oh. is very effective, but not quite enough. Dual elites starting to light up now as we'll see it go down to a two versus one. Automatic. The last remaining player, but bomb is ticking away at some pace, and he still has two kills to find. Should be all done here. We'll see if he can get one more. Running out of bullets, and that's going to be the round. Cloud9 pretty clean towards the end there. Well, that's one of the names I'm excited to see back in the server for EG is Automatic. It's Absolutely. Uh, great to get him back from Valorante. Might have a couple more very soon. I, I also want to see a bit more from Hex, the young gun added to, nice. the, to the main roster. In terms of Breeze and Cirque, the, the desk had a lengthy conversation about that. I don't think we need to compound that at all. I'm just here to see if EG can continue to show signs of improvement. Uh, Blast didn't look terrible for them. No. Uh, so let, let's see if they can bring us something a little bit saucy as we could be going fast down mid. The scouts to offer up a little bit of protection. Naphne, uh, they're here. Naphne, oh. they're in your face, mate. And this 5-7 can do so much damage. Three kills. Blinking, you miss a Hobbit trying to make a meal of this, but it's just inters. It's all over. They didn't see that one coming, did they? The aggressive push down towards middle yields four kills, and now it's a four versus one. Inters, the last player remaining, spots one towards library, but no battle has to be taken on the CT forces. They can run that clock down. They've got full control of the bomb, of course, and upgraded to AK-47s and Mac 10 I guess there's a slight possibility Inters can pull this one off, but... Uh, I don't fancy his chances. It'd be a huge clutch early for the support player of Cloud9, but you saw Naffy there on the stairs. He wasn't even acknowledging that they didn't even have the gun out. Yeah, that was quite rough to watch. Um, early stages here, still waking up perhaps, but uh, yeah, he didn't see that one coming whatsoever. Why is nobody looking long? Okay, starting to investigate it now is automatic, but Intus has already been able to go through the library here, so they did let him off the leash. Now he has been noted. There's so many guns to be scavenged here. It was the Galil an AK and three Mac 10s. So they'd love to rip this out of Inter's hands, but he's just on damage control now. You don't want to allow the CTs to carry everything they're going to scavenge through. True. Maybe he believes he can actually win this. Well, if he gets one more kill, I dare say he has a, a slight chance, but time ticking away, 30 seconds. We've got Breeze now towards that boiler room. And this is the key frag. No one to trade it if Inter's comes out on top. And I'm sure he'll be looking towards this position, but Breeze one step ahead of him. That's a very convincing round there from EG. Didn't have to work too hard for it either. Pushing down middle. Naphany just didn't seem to be aware of it whatsoever. And there we go, 1-1. One, one. Could be the ring rust here. Uh, the fact of the matter, Perhaps. Cloud9 have not played an official in about 70 plus days. Sure. Uh, Cologne was a long time ago now. They've had the entire tournament break. They've had the lead in here. They're not a partner team over there for Blast, so didn't have an opportunity to play any officials to kick off the season. And they're in Group D, which means they've had to sit and watch uh, A through C. Well, presumably a lot of practice as well thrown in. You would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you would hope they've been practicing. <laughs> so uh, we'll see what they can make of their force play and response here. Round three coming up, and we've got four pistols and Naphne with the Galil once again. Smoke off towards Banana. No real aggression for the CT side as we poke and probe towards the B lean. It's going to be a Palmer's control as well for Cloud9 as they set themselves up with a couple of flashbangs, one smoke available. Uh, it's not looking too good in terms of execution. Looking for a pick, ideally, as we have a double stack from the CZ side towards Arch and Cirque and Hext, of course. Well, this one smoke has been juggled back to Naphany now, and where does he want to deploy it? You, you would be either expecting long or mo. Nothing too flashy. No, uh, just a down. standard smoke as down. well. Not even a liner. Yep. So he'll lob that one out, and now you know the hit's coming. It's just those few flashes to trickle out here. Hext is spamming through the smoke. He's done a good job of dissuading the early mid-control. And remember, that smoke's going to be fading very shortly. So they have to pounce 
towards his apartment position right here, right now. Breeze seems in an ideal position to shut them down here with the AK-47. Smoke is spot on, and Sendry might be even better. 40 seconds and running out of time and space. Cloud9 opt to go towards the arch instead. Four players in this direction. The arch is actually pretty open. Neyland's falling back towards B, so they went through CT spawn. Maybe their best avenue of approach. But uh, unclear where they want to finish up. Three players residing on the A boys. site. Yeah, can't really go through spawn anymore. Has to be the wrap. Uh, should we should we hit the side? I I I, I guess we we can't save. It's not the type of round to look in for that. And this crossfire is going to be hard to break here. Twelve seconds on the clock as they start to make their way in. The kills need to be coming. And now Hobbit will strike first blood. Breeze on the trade, and it's all looking good. They've got the kills. They just need to plant the bomb, and there's plenty of time for it. <laughs> um, That's phenomenal. They just sat and waited. They just absolutely wrecked them there, Chad. They just waited and waited and waited. It works. You can't argue with the result, can you? The bomb goes down, they find four kills, and they did that with just two flashbangs. They were held up, they had the smoke down towards Arch. They had two flashes left, come in together, coordinated, and somehow Evil Genius is only finding one kill in the form of Hobbit. It's Neelan saving the MAC-10. That's remarkable. Well, the, the, mm, mm, mm. Okay, let's unbox this here, shall we? Because sure. if we were going to look at it by the book, EG totaled up into the side, they were using the clock against them, they had yep. the crossfires there. But maybe a little bit of fear in that in, in that notion, right? Because you are up against a lighter buy. They didn't want to overstep the mark. You understand that. But somebody needed to because they just got blindsided. I guess they gave them a bit too much space and control. That much one, respect. That one flash towards the graveyard might have been enough to get nice and close towards the bomb site where two players are waiting and the Tech-9 just ran them over there. 2-1. EG will save an M4 and uh, a MAC-10, but... Look, look what Cloud9 get. They get a lot of, they've got a lot of <laughs> rifles. It's fair. <laughs> so we can see now the replay. You can see this overwhelming the bomb site and this two players so far removed. Nothing could be done. Suck. No, oh, he doesn't look happy about it. As we get into round number four, there will be another force by him response from the CT side. Now, this is where things can start to spiral. Let me tell you. Neelan will be observing the flames. Fancies his chance. His flashbang goes over. Gets control. Lots of damage, but uh, he's the one receiving it, unfortunately. That's through the smoke. Shiro takes him down. It's a good sequence. The extinguish to pounce yeah, off guard nice with idea. the flashes, the deep smoke, the deep molly to clear out that broom closet. So the, the plan was there, but just taking so much damage. Well, Tim will pick up the M4 at least. So uh, not all is lost, uh, but Banana might be as they'll reclaim the territory. Cloud9 start to make their way up. They've still got plenty of utility. Three, make it four smokes, flashbangs, and maybe even a little boost towards half all here, just to have a look. Clear out the close proximity. And it looks like it's absolutely fine. We have one player towards B. That's Hexed. He's waiting in spawn with the Deagle. He's about to be smoked off by Nafani, who thinks better of it. Might just be the point man. And it's a pretty underwhelming smoke in the CT. A bit of a gap on the left. Not the worst smoke, but uh, might not do enough to dissuade them. I really, I, like, it, they've made it so hard for us these days because some of the players, like Hobbit especially on the CT side, loves to throw one with a gap intentionally and use right. it one way. But now, even if they throw it wrong, they'll be like, ah, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was trying to one-way it. And uh, that's not always the case, is it? So at least they have a good excuse. Exactly. You always got something to fall back on soon. We all need excuses in life. Or reasons. Uh, interchangeable for a lot of people. So... What can EG make of this round? Not much, I would say, considering they lost that first pick. Nice drive from Neelan, didn't really work out for him. It's going to be saving the M4 and the body armor and deagles they already have makes sense, but Cloud9, as you mentioned, choosing the T side on their opponent's map pick. You don't see that at all these days. I think it's to get the cobwebs off. I think if they were to start on the, the CT side of this map as their first official yeah. uh, in, in over two months, then and, and you're getting dictated to by the pace. And you know, I guess with hard. it being the first game of the day, bear in mind, most of these teams won't play like a prac game before they go into this sort of sure. matchup. They'll do some DM, of course, but you won't be playing like a, a practice clan game or anything at that point. So Nine maybe just scrim. having the, the AK-47s <laughs> going for those one taps, controlling the pace of the game while everyone's still getting warmed up. Uh, could be something behind it, but... Uh, so far, so good. 3-1 as Cloud9 survived with five members there, e.g. anything but. And that was their force by, remember. So saving them for can't really justify much more investment, but they did get two deagles and armor to go with them. I think a positive note as well is Cloud9 remembered to ban Nuke. So uh, that, that right <laughs> that yeah. Antwerp situation was yeah. uh, left him a little bit red-faced, didn't it? Now, uh, I guess if you are just joining us, I don't know if we're going to get too much excitement in a round like this. Uh, we can talk Never you through... Know. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give it the first 10 seconds. And not whenever we say that, normally like three deagle kills come in, we have to go, right, back to, back to business. Back to the action. <laughs> uh, but with the pace Cloud9 are operating at so far, I'm, oh, that's a bit of a misname there from Shiro. Uh, we have, we'll recount the teams we already have in the playoffs here, because this is Group D. If you've been joining us through uh, our all four weeks so far, this being the fourth, then... 
Congratulations. You've, right. you've made it. You've gone the whole the whole journey. Uh, but uh, the playoffs start next week, and Group D will determine our final three teams. Now, we have Vitality, Fnatic, and Na'Vi locked in for Group A. We have G2, FaZe, and Outsiders for Group B. We have Maus, Heroic, and Complexity for Group C. And in this group of Group D, the six con uh, competitors are... Cloud9 and EG, as on your screen. Mobby Star, Riders, Liquid, Furia, and Eternal Fire. Three of those names be joining that list. And uh, I think this group, as far as paper goes, it's quite clear cut. Right? It's quite clear cut. I think everyone's thinking Cloud9, Liquid, and Furia. Yeah, Cloud9, the heavy favorites for me at least. Uh, I think uh, they've got a lot to prove this event. They've been practicing a lot and uh, looking pretty sharp here as they go up four to one. Didn't give up a single kill, Chad. Uh, it was automatic. They got spammed down towards the bedroom position. That opened things up, then one by one they fell. As we get into the first gun round, but Chad, as I mentioned, these four spies can come back to haunt you. It will be EG operating with a couple of FAMASs here. That's Automatic and Neelan. Now, it should be mentioned that Automatic's no longer an AWPA. He's back on the rifle after his uh, Valorante uh, expedition. So uh, we'll see what he can make of it. Everyone's talking about Tim right now. Everyone said he can still oh, operate well on this team. Yeah, I think I think he definitely can. And we had a chat to him. We, we had EG here last week. They've been yeah. boot camping at the facility provided by ESL. We had a bit of a chat with him. He's always a level-headed guy. So, uh, we, we referenced, you know, his, his uh, recent exploits, and it's just all about solving the puzzle for him uh, is, is the way that he referenced it. And that's, that's, at the end of the day, what this is. And the puzzle right now towards Banana. Well, there's an answer. And Hello. Elon's going to spam straight on through. The flash does absolutely naught. Axel gets one back. And pinned towards the sandbag is automatic, the man in question. Yeah, it could be under some major scrutiny here. The flashbang is everything, and there's nothing he can do but go for a desperate spray. Knew he was absolutely done for there. Smoke towards spawn. Shiro leading the charge here. And we have got a nice boost from Hex. Could be enough, I suppose, but uh, he needs a double kill here. Otherwise, the round is over to Shiro check it. Apparently not. Freebie, no trade potential, so that's not bad. Has a, oh, he's just looked away. Hobbits didn't get spotted by Breeze either. I don't know how they didn't catch each other right there. Maybe some uh, black bars or stretch res going on, but Inter's footsteps will be noted now. So the loose piece of all of this is Hobbit. Inters is going to lose the bomb here to Breeze without a doubt. Just a bullet to the head and oh, Breeze, can he get the second? No, Axar will trade and Hobbit has the rotations oh, covered off here. The shark in the water of the Maltese seas. Hobbit will take down Circuit. <laughs> or Hexed. He stalled out the B push, but now he's in a one on two. He did so well to get that initial frag, but still has a fighting chance, albeit with no utility. Finds a smoke. Uh, can he get anything else? Any other more goodies towards the bottom and middle here? Doesn't look like it. Bomb down towards A. Axel in the apartments. Hobbit patrolling the pits. Known for that position for sure. We'll see whether Hex can do anything with this. I guess he could throw a log, smoke out the apartments. That just kind of tells you exactly where they are. He'll be found by Axel first. This is the key frag. If you can get this one, you never know, but uh, out position. And there it is, five to one in favor of Cloud9 on the T side of Inferno on your opponent's map pick. Not where you want to be. Not the start you were looking for when you woke up today by any means. Yeah. But uh... you off guard, it's that little, little nub at the top of the P250 that gives it away. Yeah. But uh, they what managed to win one of five sevens. Oh, that's a good question. Can't be um, the Royal Flush. Can't, definitely can't be the Royal Flush. Uh, I guess we'll have to work on it. But uh, Axar working towards this B side of the map. Flashbangs, not ideal, but uh, absolutely fine. No swing from the CTs here. Just deploying a little smoke there in front of the bomb site just to keep them entertained as they fall back from B, actually. So this is where there's a chance. Three man stack towards the bedroom position. One towards Boiler as well. That nade won't touch him too much. Zerk falls back. And this is a very important frag. And CDs can get this cleanly. Oh, yeah. They pick up a rifle. It's still a chance, but unfortunately, Hobbit will spray them down. Same story for Zerk. I just want to talk through a little detail there. So they were harassing both apartments and Boiler at the same time. And they were obviously wanting to team up with those five sevens. But when I think it was a flash towards the apartment stairs, drew the Boiler player's attention towards the halls of, and then Hobbit strikes. So really good teamwork there from Cloud9. Good understanding yeah. of the situation. I think it was Heats we saw double stack in those apartments do great success, actually. Yes. Um, looked very good, but it uh, doesn't work too well with just the pistols. And uh, we will see Automatic meeting his maker in the form of Hobbit, who managed to get his second kill of the round, or his third, I should say. Nice work, 6-1. Um, they've actually done very well already on the T side of Inferno. We'll see if they can keep it up. Or finally in the hands of Cirque. Now, there's a player we haven't seen too much from in the last couple of years, Chad. I think it's fair to say. Yeah, I, I think we during the COVID era, they were condemned to online. It was towards the tail end of 2019, I think is what everybody should remember with IEM New York, EG yeah. being a, a force to be reckoned with back then. 
Uh, obviously, we had all the, the Daps, Stanner's Law, fun little storylines going on as well. We do have Daps returning as well. He's coaching Dude. Liquid, so uh, we'll get to hear and see from him later in this tournament. But uh, Cirque is a name, and the desk is very... I don't. I, I guess divided. Uh, Kassad thinks that there's there's still hope for Cirque. Yanko thinks not at all. And I, I guess the pro league here will be telling of where he's at as a player. But you need an orbit to find impact in the current meta. That's that's not a conversation. Absolutely true. And uh, we'll see how he gets on here. Currently towards the quad side with two of his teammates. They have got Breeze boosted up as well. Here's a Molotov towards Sandbags. Is Nathan and Co just going through the motions? We haven't seen much CT aggression here. Only in the rounds are a little bit desperate. We saved them four. They've actually been quite passive and allowed full B control for Cloud9 here, but anything but towards the quad side. Flash setup bangs, here. Flashbangs can be very effective though. The Molotov underneath the quad as well could be a problem. So smoke off towards Arch. There will be a battle towards this side of the map. Speculative spam just does force them off in fact. Oh, they have backed off. They didn't even use the stack. You're hoping to lock down the mid with this, and they've just opened the runway straight in. The stack crumbles, and oh. so there's everybody on EG. Just breeze now towards the pit. Needs a multi-kill, and can only get one. Napani, two kills on the entry up the short side. And if any of you at home have played much Counter-Strike, you know, going up the short side against a pit, graveyard, site crossfire, is a nightmare. Yeah, they've done very well there. It was actually the boiler player that showed presence for us towards the Orpha, baited out the shot, and then Nafani swinging round. Pixel perfect precision, manages to get a double kill there, and the round's already over. Sure, it's a three on two, but as you can see, EG have two players towards the B bomb site. Just holding on to the little they've got, and the hunt has been called. Cloud9 are going for it. They're gonna try and take down these players if possible. They've moved Shiro over with the AWP, and they're both residing towards ruins, kneeling at the coffins, actually. So. Every chance Shiro will find him. I don't know if they're going to go step over the mark here. So just containing seven to one. No real interest in this other than getting close. So exciting us for no reason. And Nafani, he looks ecstatic right now. You can see him. He's loving life. He's having a big smile. He's, no, he's just going through the motions. Nafani's here to take care of business. And they are clinical shots right there from Nafani. Yeah absolutely taken down there. I think that there's some common themes in this group for Cloud9 and Furia, uh, who we'll be having a little bit later, is they're aggressive in-game leaders. Sure. And over the break, how have they reinvented themselves? Do they have new moves? What are we going to see from the approach of these teams? Uh, so I I'm very excited to see more from Nafani here. Well, we get into the next round. Two saved M4s once again. EG, though, with the pistols once more. Two Deagles and a 5-7. Shiro setting up the flashbang here towards Banana. Uh, they have got some basic control this time. Neelan down towards the bottom with the M4, but very difficult position to find multi-frags there, especially when you're alone. We'll see whether he's granted anything. They seem to be aware of the angles. Nafani coming out to explore once again, but... Thinks better of it. Back towards middle we go. So need to be aware of the flank coming in from Banana. No one watching it for now. Axel just having a look. He's not going to check this. Just showing a bit of presence, but Neelan's heard it all. And now this is his chance to strike. Ooh, Axel. Is he going to turn back around here, Neelan? Oh! Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, kill. could have been a couple we'll more it. there if he got that one clean. We'll take could have it. had a chance for a second kill. We'll get in and get out. It's still not going to be easy for EG to stick the landing in a round like this, but at least they still have the four-man stack over towards the A site, and time starting to become an issue now. But Cloud9 have been able to work with 10 seconds on the clock and win a round. So as long as they get past Breeze here in apartments, a big kill for Inters. Breeze steps out and hits the shot. Another gun salvaged. Here we go, then. This is a round. That's a copy, yeah. yeah. That's excellent. Another freebie. Nafani will go down. Five on two. Might be thinking about the save at this stage. We'll see what they've got in mind. Hobbit towards the end of the apartment. Smoked off, of course. 20 seconds, and yeah, you might just be holding on to the AWP. They have got a lot of cash, to be fair. They've got $15,000 yeah. on Hobbit, so uh, in it. we'll see what they can make of it. Nice little tag there towards Breeze, but just enough to push him off the balcony. Not enough for a frag. Five, four, three, and yeah, just saving the AWP. Don't want to give that over if you can avoid it. So okay. there it is. Second round found, and that was uh, all down to the push down towards B. Well, you bring that up, and the two rounds that they've converted now have been pushes, right? One was just Neyland, but the first was an aggressive maneuver down mid with nothing getting caught off guard in the second round of the game. So uh, that's going to be difficult to continue to replicate here. Yeah, not the most promising results when the only rounds you've picked up are due to force buys and saves, but uh, they'll take it all day long. Big smile on his face there for Breeze as we get into round number 10. Or for Cirque once more. Yet to really strike with the weapon, but he's going towards B this time. And so are the players of Cloud9 looking to push through. 
for its utility. Assist. And Nealon's actually got himself a prime oh. spot there for the double kill. Bit of a one-way situation. Two kills through the smoke, and then they've got a five, a five versus three. But Nealon desperately low, trying to get his way out. That Molly does absolutely nothing. The second is good, though. It's going to at least isolate Nealon. He can't get away from the sandbag, and Hobbit will finally take him out of the equation. After 14 points of health, there's still two players residing on this B bomb site. Automatic getting the high ground. Circ over towards CT spawn with that AWP trained. Now, if we take inventory of the utility that's available here, currently they have two HEs and a smoke. Hello. Well, and an arm shows around the corner. So Circ's AWP will strike. There it is. He's off. And uh, not really much seen I can do with this round, I would say. He spotted the players there towards the boost position. Automatic will take them down. Just Inter's now trying to cause as much damage as possible. So it is EG with their first proper gun round under their belt at this stage. Inter's though fighting back and looking quite fierce, to be honest with you. Bates out the off shield towards Coffins as well. I like this. A double stack towards the bottom of Banana. Guarantee the round. No one needs to go hunting for this kill. Hard for that one to go wrong, but there's still an opportunity that the fight on B goes poorly for Circia. Just a missed orb shot and getting run down. He's being. As soon as he gets towards the bomb site, that's their call for the rotation in. And there it is. Nice shot from Cirque. Much better round for him. Two frags in total. And a nice little wall bang to kick things off towards Hobbit as well, who did expose his thumb, I believe, and uh, was struck. So round 11, as we mentioned, though, so much money for Cloud9. They had almost $16,000, which is the max. But this little one-way situation, they didn't see it coming. It's a lovely little smoke deployed and finally dropped. Neeland did the damage already, though. And that's how Cirque closed out the round. So AK having a bit of a rougher year. There's some circumstances that you can bring up to do with that. But I, I, Cloud9 have the backbone. They have the understanding of how they need to approach the game as the team. Now it's about getting the most out of the individuals. So this is why I'm, uh, look, I was really excited to see Fury and uh, Cloud9 play throughout this group just to see where they're at. Right, we haven't seen much of them for some time now, a couple of months in some cases. But uh, back into round number 11 here. Flashbang the boy from Neelan, just trying to do as much damage as possible. He finds another opening kill. Lovely, Lovely. conversion there. The flashbang you can see was overwhelming for Axe. Had to tuck himself in towards the corner. Nothing he could do, and it's another man advantage for EG. So they're looking pretty decent here. And it's actually allowed a rotation back towards A as well. Bolster the defenses there. Four players on the A bomb site, and Neelan's still very active and causing damage here. Bit of a ruckus towards the bottom of Banana. Well, the two names I mentioned have almost gone down to Neelan in this round. Axel already in the grave. Shiro pretty damn close. And what's the response here? Because if they try their luck in towards this A play, it's the four man stack fill things out. They are called back towards the base of Banana now. They're going to regroup with Shiro, who has the bomb. He's going to throw that one over towards Inters. There's still enough utility for a full execute. Smoke towards CT and the Coffins. Molly towards backside and flashes to boot, but it's looking a bit more contacty here. Flash and go. Yeah, smoke towards Coffins. Vanillan doing so much damage here. Takes Napani down to six, but he will be dropped. He have got Automatic and Spawn, who picked up some flashbangs en route. And there's a huge gap in the smoke. Takes a nade, but not too much damage there. Misses out on his spray, unfortunately. Has to go for the reload as they do cross over. The nade should do considerable damage there. There it is. Inter's down to 30 for the bomb to be planted. Four and four. Maybe the advantage for EG. Definitely worth going for this one. Have so much utility here. Smoke off top banana. Get incendiaries towards the back of the site. Yeah. Use the flashbangs. That conversation is being had now. There's the smoke towards banana. They yeah. can molly towards new box and emo and go. Absolutely right, Chad. And here comes the utility deployment. Terrorists aware of it, and they're trying to play heads up Counter Strike. They're being taken down one by one. They're so desperately low. Multiple spray down required if Minters can't connect the dots. And now just poor old Shiro. He's towards the back. Gets the shot through the smoke, but it's not going to be quite enough there. Great retake from EG. As mentioned, the incendiaries flush them out of their position, and there's going to be the defuse there. But that's all down to. Whew, I don't know. It felt like uh, Neelan doing God's work there towards the banana area. Just doing a ton of damage at the start of the round. Yeah, he's, he's done a lot of work in that because remember, Shiro was 30 HP. So yeah. he took a little bit more damage through spam through the smoke there late. And then the molly just had to finish him off. So really good stuff for the retake here from EG. I thought oh, probably it was nice. It was very good indeed. So automatic coming to back up B once again. Axel willing to challenge. Looking and weaving around these flames, I need to be very careful. Good grenades towards the top. Do minimal damage, unfortunately, though. But they have claimed Banana for themselves. Here comes another flashbang just to see what's on the other side. A boost up as well. Good jump up. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty clear. And we have got full apartments control for Cloud9 as well. Hobbits towards the boiler. 
Inter's ready and ready to go towards our bedroom position. Well, we have a lull in gameplay here. If uh, you at home want to get involved in the conversation on Twitch or on Twitter, use the hashtag ESL Pro League. Uh, use tag AHNUG at Sponge. Let us know on Twitch chat right now. Let's have a little quiz for everybody. There are two major winners in the server right now. Who are they? Nice. Okay. That's a good question. Nice and easy to kick it off. Yeah, we'll keep it... Uh... But look, we'll get harder as the day goes on, I think. That's fair enough. Uh, but right now, time has surpassed. We know that Cloud9 like to take things at a saunter, not a sprint. Announcing their presence with a moto smoke. Hex has done well to deploy a defensive one of his own here, and he's looking for a gap, but... I'd have to relinquish this control. So dividing long with that smoke, it's always a good way to push that rotator either in towards the site or over towards library or CT. And now they're starting to layer on the attack. This is looking a little bit overwhelming for EG. They have got three players set up and ready. We'll be breezed to open up the fragging with a kill towards Naphne, but it's all about his position from Tim as well. The graveyard spot, he can swing out and do a lot of damage here. The round might be confirmed at this stage, but the HE, that's going to do God's work as it takes down into the flashbang deployed as well. Bounces off the door, confirms the position there of Shiro, waiting for his teammate, but they've only got five seconds, Chad. The round's done, unfortunately, for them. No chance to even plant the bomb, even if they get this frag, it's in vain. And it will be another one for EG, but uh, Hobbit just making sure he takes some players down with him. He's trying to survive here, which he will. But uh, EG, they continue their streak four in a row. I just want to congratulate Twitch chat, Henry. They're very wise. A lot of people are getting the correct of answer of Hobbit and Automatic. There we go. Uh, and they won PGL Krakow 2017. It yep. was Gambit for Hobbit. And uh, then we had the Cloud9 victory at the E-League Major. Uh, Who could forget? Automatic. So congratulations, everybody. Give yourself a pat on the back. You've done well today. Your Counter-Strike fans through and through. Well, EG starting to turn up here. Zerk with four kills. Investigates towards middle. Didn't spot anything this time, but uh, confident as ever. Neelan more than willing to challenge towards the top of Banana, takes minimal nade damage and continues his push. He's been doing a lot of damage with the spray through the smoke, but this time thinks better of it. Tucks himself in towards the cubby, gets another smoke from the teammate and automatic will fall back. They're yeah, gonna push through here onto Neil and the flashes, uh, well, didn't look. Fantastic, but apparently according to the kill feed, Neilan was in hot water there. So Banana Control has been taken back. Nafani can call the crew over, but the rotation from EG is swift. Yeah, it's Three significant, players on the side it? for a re-aggress. They're going to take this control back. So a bit of a gamble here from EG. They're going to flash forward, and unfortunately for them, nobody's on the other side. Automatic goes off the second flash, sees nobody home, can call this clear, but at this juncture, Cloud9 know there's likely two players on that B bomb site. Well, it's up to Breeze to defend middle here. We'll have to go for the spam through the smoke, and uh, when will he strike? He actually oh. times it very well, but gets one kill, but it might not be enough here. Hexed. Which is the same smoke, and they might not detect his presence here, but oh, Shiro definitely does. Timing's awkward here. Bomb to be planted, Hexed. He's a flashbang from a teammate here, ideally, as he encroaches towards that position. We've got a player towards Graveyard. Does he spot him? Absolutely does. Nice little flick there, and this is the flashbang coming through. Down to a three on three. Kits available, of course, and still the smoke. Just waiting for their opportunity to strike. Good util so far. Softening up these players on the site is great, and Hello. Axel's gonna go around through the box. Hex has been a nuisance here. Enters will eventually deal with him. Another kill for Enters on the plate. Jumped in through the smoke, and it's going to be a matter of time until he comes through to Shiro's side and a one on two now. Make it a one on one. Enters took Zerk. In the meantime, it's just Shiro versus Automatic now. Bomb seems way too far going, and Shiro still hits a big shot right there. Finally, around back on the board for Cloud9. They've secured the half with eight. But that looked dangerous for a moment there. Hex was, uh, was, was pretty domineering at that presence. Yeah, it all started with that awkward push from Breeze. Sure, he only gets one kill, but uh, certainly ruffled the feathers there of Cloud9 and the decent retake utility, that shot from Cirque as well. After they get softened up with a grenade, yeah, just okay. uh, straight through the smoke, hits the wall bang, and there was certainly a chance there. One, they will not convert, but an exciting round and a great shot, as you mentioned, from Shiro there. I still think, had he got the kill maybe a second before, Automatic still could have defused that one, but uh, either way, uh, it's just going to slip by the wayside for them as we get into round number 14. Another tactical timeout now, Good. third one. What? This, half, this is the pick of EG. Would have liked to win the half themselves, but uh, not the end of the world. I would say they need to convert these last two if possible. Seven's all right. Seven, Seven they can definitely do. work with here. Yeah, absolutely. A key battle. Nealon more than happy to take these fights at the start. A tricky food of smokes, but gets nothing for it. Does he want to go for the spam? He does, but uh, I would say he has, probably has a full back at this stage. Good grenade. No damage inflicted, though. Everybody in notice. Over towards Banana for now. So there's Tussle for control. 
As Nealon's deploying retail utility, now he's ahead of this and he takes the fight, Nealon gets the better of him. That's actually a very big duel to win. Yeah, absolutely. They still retain top banana control. You can see through the position of Axile, he's on the other side of those barrels. Automatic requested for assistance over towards B one more time. And this setup towards A, we've seen this before, the heavy quad side lean. Yep. The boost up there as well, but they actually dismount and decide to get into a more defensive setup, perhaps. Going for the crossfires and the bomb site, getting the MP9 in towards the apartments as well. But it will be a B finish, and Automatic is thinking about vacating the premises. Yeah, this is a problem. Nobody in the site. So if Cloud9 execute, at least they're in retake oh, formation. That's bomb. There's the execution. They're, they're completely locked out for this. The bomb will get planted here. Trying to get a kill through the smoke if possible, but his Axile aggressive, of course, takes Nealon down, the danger man of the B-bomb side. Wants to be planted. And now Automatic there with no utility. He already gave that over to his teammate. They have got an incendiary, but four and four. Money's not great. Do you think about saving for that last round? I think they're going to give this one a go. They can go for a similar plan as the last time around. Smoke off top go. banana. Cirque's gotten one onto Axile this time through another wall. So looking good here. Hot under the collar for Inters. Now we'll have to swing out. Needs a kill. Can't find anything. Two on four situation now. Chiro back of the site. Has Hobbit over towards Banana. Try and make this one work. Chiro's gone. It's all on Hobbit. Just has to spam him through the smoke here. Easier said than done. They're getting the kit back towards the bomb. And what he's taken down Hex for the city to defuse. Here he spams down. There's one more kill to find. Hobbit picks up another gun, but the bomb's been defused. It's unfortunate for Hobbit. He gets all the kills, but not the round. Eight to six now for Cloud9. Amazing effort there from Hobbit. Gets all four kills, can't quite find the diffuser there. An epic effort there, it has to be said. He does shut down the finances going forward as we go into round number 15. They won't have much cash at all on the EG side, but still a disappointing finish there and great utility usage from the CT side once again. Oh, the yeah. retake was overwhelming. You can see them getting burned to an absolute crisp at the back there. It was the MP9 picking up the long range kills as well. But this was uh, a masterclass from Hobbit. So precise, so calm as well. Couldn't quite find the diffuser, unfortunate for him, but does do a lot of financial damage. We're straight back into it here. Nealon continues this great showing towards B. Finds Hobbit and gets himself a double kill, Chad. With that Famos, that's excellent work. He's done a really good job here towards the top of Banana. Cloud9 are going to be going into the half, losing a lot of this momentum. They did the heavy yeah. listing in the early stages with the pistol. They lost the force by, but they won one of their own back. And they really marched over EG when the economy was on their side. And to be fair, they've had advantages in some of these rounds. It's been some good decisions from EG and some great play from Nealon over towards Banana. A Cirk on the jiggle has spotted one. Will be flashed forward? It's a good flash, but I want to take the fight. And maybe fortunately so. Yeah, he doesn't have to go down here. He doesn't have to find another kill. They've got a five on three. The problem is a player has snuck through towards CT spawn, but they have turtled up on the A-bomb side. Less than a minute to go. Molotov. Maybe better used towards the pair. I like that from Shiro. Hold on to it. And going towards CT spawn. Nafani were actually trying to see if he can open things up here. They're aware of it, but they only have the Famasis bear in mind. So this could get a little bit dicey. Still focusing towards A, however. They're going to search short. They're searching short because of that one smoke on B and they walk into Shiro. If they can trade this out, Inter's going to grab another one right here in no man's land towards the pit. It's going to be Breeze. He's just standing tall, literally between the side box. And Nafani can punish that. That was a three on five. That's now a two on two. Yeah, this is starting to fall apart for EG. Nealon getting those first two frags. I have to find a couple more if they're going to convert this one. Automatic coming in through the bedroom slash boiler. Nafani, though, this is a very strong position. I don't think you'll be anticipating this. We'll see what Nealon makes of it. And indeed, with the FAMAS, not much he can do. But known for a clutch or two is Automatic. Only got five kills to his name so far. He sneaks out of the apartments here. Final round has to go for it. As the incendiary, but no kip. AK-47 in hand. It just doesn't look possible for him. Hunting for information, hoping to find a kill, but Incendiary does some work, but uh, time is of the essence and the round is over. Yeah, poor Automatic here. He knows where one is, but it doesn't matter. Nafni over towards the short. It's here in the pistol. Five players make their way towards the banana area. They've got Hobbit and Shiro to deal with, and a flashbang of Inters as well, but this is uh, kicking off very early indeed. The first kill will go in favor of EG, make it a couple, and now just Inters at the very back. All they detect is presence here. Oh, they seem to be aware of it, Chad. It's just More than aware. He's lying in wait, though, allowing them to cross the pool. I thought he would use that pillar defensively, but Hexed, fantastic work from him. Two in the round, one for Cirque, and now it's just been battening down the hatches. I, I don't suspect they'll have too many issues here in a 2 on 4 I think you might be right. It's the Jewel Berettas, however, you never know. Axel with a pretty quiet game by his standards so far. Five kills. They'll both be coming in from the coffin side, so Hexed will spot them. Doesn't need to commit, just run the clock down. Every second counts at this stage. Don't want to give anything away. No window's opportunity, and you can feel like this round's not possible now. C9 call it off, holding on to the 
Julie's if possible, they can save 100 armor. They will be able to get helmets as well, but that's not going to be happening here. Striking towards the ruins, REG, and they have a very clean round there. Four players surviving, managing to salvage some USPs too. So I assume we'll see the force buy from Cloud9 here is where EG came to life, but uh, very convincing stuff there. Pretty much a, a B rush with a little execution there. Yeah, to seal the deal. If on the top of Banana, that was uh, the highlight of that. The man of culture is Inters, Henry. He's got uh, a standard Vox Caddo and a Vox Hollow on his oh, that USB, is, that is as quite well as nice. iBuy Power and a uh, LGB. So uh, vintage USB. That is, that is absolutely Vox for sure as well. Yeah. I love that. And uh, his Hobbits trying to do some initial damage at the start of the round. Not going to find any just yet. EG operating with four rifles, but focusing mainly on the utility. No AK-47s. They've gone for the Galils across the board. Don't mind that whatsoever, considering up against pistols here. It's probably the best choice. And uh, we'll see them gain control of Banana, but need to be very careful here. Here's another grenade. Doesn't do too much damage, fortunately. Uh, nothing to write home about there at all. So, Hexed, that's a sneeze. He's not worried about that well, in this climate. We'll be smoked to deploy in exchange, and that's really all EG are looking for. Trying to pull out the utility here, yep. make sure in the late round they don't have to go through a gray screen. They still have to get rid of three more that are dotted across the map. One for Inters, one for Hobbit, and of course one for Axile, who is yet to activate here. But now that he's on the CT side, I'm sure we'll see him come to life. Action's on mid now. Banana, sure, they parked the bus of Hex towards the top, and now they're working on this mid control. Going through the paces, this is... Tidy stuff from EG. Deep smokes towards the long side. Molly towards the porch. Now they use the range here, but they have to deal with the scout. Yeah. Shiro, no slouch on this, but won't get the first tag, and that's going to be problematic. Yeah, that tag really had to be his for them to stand a chance in this round. I would say Breeze and Hex making light work of them one by one. They're getting mowed down. Just pour it into here. Nice shot. Does uh, deny the initial bomb plot at least, but that's all they'll find in the round. Four survive, and that's the force by completely thwarted there by EG. They should be going 9 9, no problem as uh, prophesized by chat there. Yeah, and that's uh, what we were looking for, for a competitive affair. We do have the most normie of map pools ahead of us here today. We got Dust2 following this Inferno bout, and then the third and decider, if we do need it, will be Mirage. But Smiles creeping on the faces now of EG as they know they've yeah. done the heavy lifting in the early stages of this half. It's been convincing, actually. And uh, Cloud9, of course, operating with the full eco now. As we enter round number 18, they'll go for a four-man stack towards B, but uh, Neelan, man of the hour, so many influential frags on this side of the map on the CT side. He'll be more than happy to throw himself in with the Mac 10 set up his rifles, and uh, scout the area, perhaps. Please be careful, though. Good flashbang set up by Inters. You can give these rounds up. It does happen. Are going to throw it above sight? Are they going to allow them in? Or flash and fight in pool? Okay, there's the beer. Yeah. They will get one, but high telling it elsewhere should be the name of the game right now for EG. There it is. That's absolutely fine. As mentioned, he had the Mac 10 Doesn't give up too much there. He's ascertained there's a few players towards B. Bit of a stack going on as Axel. He'll fall back, and they're just pumping the brakes here, showing presence towards A, and actually convincing Cloud9. This is where they'll be finishing up. You can see Inters rotates off as well, but things better of it. Molotov going to be deployed towards the B side of the map, towards second orange's new boxes. And uh, in they go, more than happy to uh, enter the side of this stage. Should be absolutely fine. They know up against uh, not much at all, but taking quite a lot of damage here. Automatic down to 32. Once the bomb's down, crisis will be averted, but... Uh, We'll see whether Shira has anything to say about it. That was the last chance, really, to cause a dent, but it doesn't work out for him. It looks scary for a moment, didn't it? Yeah. Now it's just about making sure you don't lose all these rifles. Set yourself up a nice bank early, exactly like we saw Cloud9 do. They had a fantastic start to their T-Hall. When the guns come out, though, this is where the game will truly begin. But we're all square. That's going to be it. No chance of winning this one. Doesn't look like they'll be finding any exits either. Axile will be dropped, but Inter's fighting back with that P250. There is a player towards the coffins. He just touches the bomb. He's not trying to defuse it. He's trying to keep them in the blast radius, and maybe they'll be taken down. They have to investigate, unfortunately. So nice work. Double kill for automatic. He might be dropped here, and indeed yeah. he will. But uh, as Chad mentioned, this is where the game really begins. There won't be an opportunity, opportunity for Shiro to pick up the AWP, unfortunately. He had $5,000. Opt for the M4 instead. Circle big, bring out his big green as we get into the bookend now. Who will be taking the lead here in the very important gun round? That kit here for the CT. So, locking them out of the sight or saving. 
Nafany still has four hundred dollars. You are right. Okay. Well, let's hope this isn't an oversight here. Nafany is the man charging down Banana right now, so he's going to run through the flames and he's going to get a fight. Zerk's gone. That's the AWP. Uh, maybe they can get that one for Shiro quite quickly because Nafany is continuing to surge forward and Neilan, through the gap in the smoke, cannot see him whatsoever. I think he thinks he's gotten out of dodge. This is going to start fading shortly, but don't worry about the fade. Shiro with the fade away onto Hex, and uh, they're overlooking this position completely. I don't know. I think Neilan might have his number here, and indeed he does. Good awareness. It's all the possibility. Lost track of the CT, but it's still a 4 on 3. Very important frag here. The Galil pumps out a load of damage. The Molotov won't finish things off, but the Orb will. Automatic. Happy to wield the weapon. Our man with the advantage. Still plenty of time here as he picks up the AK once again. Throws a coffin smoke in. And CT is just investigating, trying to get a bit of intel here. It's actually quite a nice move. You wouldn't necessarily expect this, and they're heading towards B. A great info play. They're going to be there so quick. Look at this, Henry. They're already pushing down middle. Yeah. So by the time this attack gets organized towards the top of Banana, as long as Hobbit stalls them out for it's a few seconds. A great spot as well. On top of the second oranges here. Good for one kill. You can't quite see him when you enter the sites. When you fully commit like that, you can see right now, uh, they won't know he's up there. So probably good for at least one kill, I would say. Probably trade it out. There's the frag. And uh, very well done from Cloud9 to hold on. So they take the lead and pick up that first gun round. Should be enough for a buy for EG. They've had some expensive ones, unfortunately, but 10-9 overall as Shiro recovers the AK-47 and the AWP, so they are looking in very good stead going forward here. I need a Lawmaster out there to help me as well. So the new thing that they're all saying, I don't know if it is new, okay. but I'm only noticing it now, is they're all saying aware. So like when Neilan just killed uh, Nathany there, they're all saying aware, and then they have a space and then Ness. <laughs> so I don't know where the culture is. <laughs> I don't know. Are. If somebody could explain it to me. The etymology of that one. But I'm trying to keep it with the kids. So if anyone could tell me what you're up to these days and why you're saying aware spaceness, uh, that'd be nice. But we're hanging out right now in the chicken pit. It's a fun place to be as chickens get executed here, there, and everywhere. As they probably should be. They're a nuisance. The only map they are available on is Inferno, and uh, they are a bit of a pain in the ass. But uh, can people you at home know? love them. They do. Friendly chickens. Who thought that putting chickens in a map was going to be the most entertainment we could get for these people? <laughs> in we go, though, Chad. They've actually managed to negate that first all bullet, but uh, certainly not the shots of the AK-47. Shiro having a bit of a mare here. Even more so. He can't really get going. As uh, we'll see the AWP given up. Don't think there's much chance of this falling apart. There it is. That confirms it. But Automatic has got the orb. Hits the shots, but uh, that's probably all he'll do. As he is isolated now towards the ruins. Has frozen out the map. Nice work. Make it expensive at least, and uh, he'll be dropped in due course. There we have it though, Cloud9. You little rascal. Yeah, it gets rid of the AWP. That's frustrating for them, but that's two in a row. And uh, an eco, full eco from EG. So you'd expect a nice full buy here. I think that was the correct call. But uh, starting to stretch their legs now. Cloud9 back in the driving seat here with the replay of uh, Hobbit. Previous, yeah. That was a previous round. I think Inters is, uh, you know, one of these pieces of the puzzle that obviously gets overlooked a lot because he's the most supportive element in this team. He's one of the best support players we have in the world right now. And I know that was only Glocks, but if he died there, sure. uh, there actually could have been a lot of strife on that B-bomb site. So an yeah. important survival there considering Shiro had a couple of Wiffaroonies, and now he's back to the M4A1S. So not enough money for his support, but Cirque will give it a go on the other side. Exchanging blows here with the Molotovs. Automatic throws one back towards the boiler room, making sure the CTs don't have control of the apartments. Back towards B we go, of course, but Hobbit got a nice little grenade there to land in front of the half wall. They were waiting for it, though, so no problem. No real damage inflicted. Boosting towards CT as well, so Hobbit suggesting there's just one player in towards that CT area. Ready with the utility as well. But it's all down to Nafany here. Throws over his utility, playing anti-flash. And this could be a very important moment in the grand scheme of things here. Nice smoke. Buys in 20 seconds or so, and this could cause a rotation for the CTs. We'll see the bomb's still down in T-spawn, so EG won't be committing anytime soon, that's for sure. I don't mind this lack of pace here. We know that Inferno is one of these maps where as long as you show presence, bait out the utility, you can get right. yourself into some fair aim fights late, and it's difficult for the CTs to hedge their bets without information. So keeping them in the dark, that seems to be the task so far, and EG have done exactly that. 35 seconds on the clock as they start to turn the screws over towards A. It's going to be a wrap around this long side. Automatic leading the charge. Would love to crack things open. It's Inters the first to receive. Will he get flashed, though? That's the question. I think he's got a clean jewel here. A nice position as well. Doesn't take too much damage, although it's dinked. And it's back towards B we go. But remember, the boost in CD spawn 
it's probably not going to be detected at this stage of the game. And there it is. Napoli will at least trade, but a great shot from Hex to open things up and a bit of a split here. Nealon is a nuisance. Eight seconds, bomb to be planted. Well hand around here. The bomb is going to go down. Do want to consider this retake? Inters is hot on the trail here. Has already rotated in through spawn. Has Shiro ready to flash him in towards this coffin's position. Ruins is about to be white. Nealon completely blind, but where's the swing? Inters didn't go on the second he does and Nealon had dodged the flash, so... Lucky to get that duel. It's just Breeze and Cirque right now. The Wombo combo of EG once upon a time to try and secure a round. Really need that orb to step up here. First shot. Sent packing with the flashbang as they get closer and closer to the defuse here. Breeze waiting towards Emo. Not too much utility available. The bomb taking at some pace now. The defuse has to come in. They're not checking towards Emo. I think Breeze might have done enough here. They can't actually go for the defuse, but too far gone. That's a great job from EG. They hold on just long enough there. Both the players go down for Cloud9 as well as we hit double digits for EG. Yikes. Yeah. That is a, a bit of a fumble in that situation. There was a, just a defuse key on Axile there. This is how it opens up. So I was talking about the A rap. Well, they showed the presence, and as soon as Nealon had found this gap through towards the mid to B, Naphne had no idea. He goes down, and Inter's here. He goes on the second flash. This actually lost them a, a little bit of time. I don't right. think that was the undoing. The problem... Right to weaponry, so keep track of that. Can be a very important factor, especially for the MAG-10. That run and gun potential can be potent. And see Shiro hasn't really had any magnificent orb sequences just yet. And, well, we'll continue to be quiet for him. That's what a player going in towards B, at least. Yeah, we'll see if he can get activated on Dust, too. Uh, right now, worrisome signs over towards this B bomb site. There's yeah. a lack of information across the map. Shiro has the most forward position right now, and Hex has spotted that out. We'll lob a nade in the direction of Nafani. And they're going to go through go. this. The flashes are ready. Here's the attack on towards B. Nafani has struck Hex down low, and Hobbit pu pushes ball forward. The smoke lands. That's actually very disruptive. Yeah, great incendiary as well. Denies the initial plant. I say that. They're going for the first oranges, so they've got it down quickly. Nice work. Still anyone's round here in the five versus four. Hex down to 37, but he was the point man. Making his way in with that MAC-10. No kid again, Henry. Oh, you're absolutely right. And Breeze, unfortunately for him, will be shut down. So a five versus three. Cloud9's round to give up. They need to operate much quicker than this, though. Last bits of utility being exchanged. Flashbangs to be deployed, and Cirque just like a little of the back here. He's trying to bait in Hex with the MAC-10 potentially. This is getting dangerous, Chad, in terms of the timing. Yeah, they, they, they have to save. The round's already over. The, the round is already over. What, boys, what are you doing? I know it's been a while since you played an official, but you, you know you don't have a kit. You know it takes 10 seconds to defuse. Go you down lose as well. everything again. Yep. Automatic just destroying the chance to try and get away. Inters gets to survive. Shiro goes down to the bomb. He's lost the orb. He wasn't anything to do with it. He was towards the middle of Banana, I believe. Deary me. That's a rough one. So as mentioned, that was the last of the Cloud9 money. Playing retake on the B-bomb site if you don't have a kit, um, not going to work, is it? It was a five on four in their favor as well. Lots of damage inflicted. Five on three, I suppose, after this kill. But uh, it all falls apart once again. We mentioned the lack of helmets. The MAC-10 able to do a lot of work there towards the coffin position. Automatic even more so. Denying the cash going forward. And it's just the M4 for Shiro. Not much else to report. A couple of deagles and we're a tired game here. 11 to 11. EG in a great position to win this map now. Uh, with Absolutely. all things considered here, as long as they don't have a football right now and a great start from Breeze into this round, it should be looking good. And I can understand why Hobbit's searching information. They've been executing towards that B-bomb site. You didn't have top banana control at this juncture. They do now as they start to peer in as the smokes fade. Nealon ready with a defensive Molotov once more. Ah, this is not looking good for Cloud9. And looking great for EG on the other side. I think still a lot of rounds of Counter-Strike to be played. Round 23, where we find ourselves. It was 7-1 down, EG, just to know that. We, we thought, okay, well, that's that's about what we expected. EG are going to get ran over here by Cloud9, but anything but. They're looking resilient, showing great tenacity here. And uh, they have all the advantages they could ask for to take the lead now. 50 seconds remaining. Looking like a, a very nice execution. Smokes are down, but they haven't considered Axel's position. Fortunately for them, only have the P250. One kill for Inters, but that's all he'll find. Shiro saving the M4, and there it is. I'll hold my statement for now. Shiro could cause a bit of damage here, but better off saving the M4, I would say. He's a fan of Jame Time as Shiro. Yeah. His favorite book to read as a kid. <laughs> He's uh, from the same elk. There's a couple of them. They have a club. It's like yeah. Jame, Shiro, I think Blame's in there. They do have a bit of a club where they, they get together and they talk about their stories. Well, Vox, we got some stories. I'll tell you that much. I bet you do. In the archives. Oh, from the darkness. But uh, yeah, look, 12 rounds now for EG. This, this is the lead. 
It is, and it's a worrying lead as well. In terms of loss bonus for the CTs, they're gonna get $2,900 next round on top of that 2K. So they have got a healthy buy with the saved M4 as well, they can justify an orb, right? But Shiro hasn't looked too hot with the weapon so far. Exile. Neither is Axel. That's the kind of the duo you're looking for right now. And it's Shiro's AWP. It's considered world class in many people's top fives. And uh, I haven't really seen anything from him as of yet. It's not an Orpus Paradise Inferno, but surely he'd be making light work of a team like EG, you would assume. But uh, uncomfortable. And they're sticking with the M4s for now. Damn. Get into it. Well, well Hobbit and Inters are doing their respective yeah. jobs here. Hobbit has 23 kills. Inters as a supportive element is going above and beyond right now with 21. It does really need to be a little bit more impact from Shiro and Axar here, especially on this CT side. Hey, G. Their map pick was looking like an absolute lost cause, but anything but now. They have the advantage on the T side. Uh, bombardment of utility now. The flashbang comes over. Big kill from Neelan once again. This guy might be the king of banana himself. He is looking fantastic. Naphany will answer back, fortunately, bring it back to a 4-4. Four and four. They desperately needed that. See Breeze though, calling their departments to clear. This is the way we just brought up. They, they need to stall this. The yep. fight is coming their way. This is on them to lock this site down. The rotation point of Inters is here in time, but he's about to get a rude shock on the jiggle. Hello, multiple coming my way. I need a flash and I need it now. There it is. Axel's giving away his position though. Oh. Good job. Okay, that should, that should be it, hopefully. They've got the three players here. Crossfire's enabled. No utility remaining for the T side. It's all about kills at this stage. They isolate the pit player, take him down. Shiro needs to find a couple now. One more would do it. It should secure the round. He can't find it. Two versus one. Plenty of time remaining, and the crossfire just completely melts away. The thing is, even with the flash towards long, Axel gives up his position. He has to drop off the balcony. Right. He hears that. It wasn't worth it, was it? He, he, loses, he loses the fight, still Breeze. And then Shiro, they're desperate in the site, pushes through that smoke when he needed to survive to give Nafani time, who's still on for this one on two. Nafani, can he pull this off? He needs an in-game leader's round now. One spotted towards pit. Position given up, but the shot Ooh. is great from Nafani. Spins on a dime. Call it 12-12. That's what they needed. It was getting dark out there for C9, but a silver lining on that cloud. Wow. Ooh, okay. That's kind of insane. What a performance that is. You're absolutely right. They desperately needed that after they collapsed on the A-bomb side. It all started here. Neelan, great shot towards Hobbit there. It was traded out, but you're right. As soon as they had to dismount, start throwing flashbangs, they looked very uncomfortable. Trades weren't coming through. A two versus one, and with no kid, Nafani gets the 90-degree flick, clean as you like, towards Hex, and that's a huge round. And you can see the frustration there on the faces of EG. They knew that was their time to really get in the driving seat. You consider some of the gun rounds they won consecutive. Both teams fully invested. Lost bonus not really built up. And uh, we'll get into it. As mentioned, after EG winning three rounds in a row, they're still on the back foot here. But uh, not a perfect setup either for Cloud9. You go back towards B. You've had great success here. The retakes from Cloud9 have been underwhelming. The holds have been even sure. more so. But Shiro, this is not a clear that's for you. It's going to have to be for Axel. And Breeze walks in, almost gets the double kill. One HP remaining, and he gets both kills. You hate to see that. And now the reaction play with the MP9. If you had the M4, there may be a double kill. Nice incendiary deployed, but they know they've got two kills towards A at this stage. It is full back. Breeze on one HP, somehow surviving that one. But still, anyone's round. Not a foregone conclusion by any means. Oh! Oh! No, not double. Through the smoke. Come on, Nafani, you can't do them like that. The pause was perfect. They couldn't have applied the pressure towards A-Shore, but the rotation of Hobbit was on its way back over. They stalled it out, they waited, and Nafani snatches two kills through the smoke. Well, we did say this round oh. might decide it all, and there's been some absolute antics here. A double kill towards the apartments for Breeze with the aggressive push, and then a double kill coming through right back at them through the smoke of Banana. They've got the man advantage now, I dare say that could be the round. Limping out of the apartments here will be Breeze. Two kills to his name, but one bullet will remove him from the equation. It's not being acknowledged right now. Hobbit's looking long. I don't think Hobbit's spotting this apartment position, so... He's not. He's looking towards library. If Breeze comes out of the apartments, he, he can get a free kill. Unfortunately, if Breeze can go now, and, and that's just going to leave Hobbit on the site, so this is still a very interesting round here. It might assume the site is open, and indeed they will. So there it is. It will be so going down. It's still not confirmed, however, but Breeze with such low HP, he will be dropped. So uh, a very crazy round there, Chad. 
It was the aggressive swing towards the apartments where Clown are on the back foot, but they've, they've come back to life. Yeah, this man right here on your screen, Nafani, does come under a bit of scrutiny from time to time when things aren't working for Cloud9, has secured them back-to-back -back rounds. He had the clutch, and then he had that multi-kill through the banana smoke right there. And that is pure profit for Paul Breeze, who did a lot with the Galil over towards apartments. But this is it. This is the kick in the groin right there. That one is going to sting. And the ramifications, you can see that now reflected as we do get back underway into play for round 26. And some Glocks. Just the Glocks. Gonna knock their Glocks off, Henry. <laughs> I suppose you're right. That could happen. Need to be careful out there. So, as mentioned, picking in that previous round was very important in the context of Inferno. Out nine in touch and distance now of picking up their opponent's map pick. And this one's a bit of a gimme. We were on track for a three mapper, I think, if uh, this had fallen in the favor of EG, which it still can. It's feeling less likely now. I'm sure the frustrations yeah. will be starting to brew at this juncture, but they've been competitive here today against Cloud9, who are one of these names who are towards the tippy top of Counter-Strike. Don't worry where the rankings are out right now. This is definitely yeah, a team the, to be feared. They're the favorites in this group. I think that's uh, quite an obvious statement to make, but uh, let's see what Hobbit can do. Very, very clean. Surgical with that M4. Looking for a bit of an ace here. Finally shut down, but the job has been done. Just Breeze remaining, and uh, he'll be taken care of by Nafani there. So four players survive, 14 to 12 overall on the CT forces here for Cloud9. And no more tactical timeouts, I believe, for EG, right? So they have exactly. to just uh, push forward. Stomach this and, and see if they can find some solutions. Now, uh, likely to see them return to some of the banana plays. I think that was what was on the agenda when they were considering getting spammed through the smoke by Nafani. Uh, I think that yeah. kind of rumbled the plans. But the, the B-bomb site has been where success for EG has come through. So now that they have the rifles to some degree back in the hands with the util, is there anything left in the tank? Well, let's see what can be done here. No AWP for the CT forces, but they have got a couple of AK-47s. Hobbit has looked fantastic and yeah. continues to do so as uh, he'll find Neelan as well. He's been the main aggressor towards B. I'm just going to say with that Molotov, right, if, if you can't throw the Molotov correctly so it spreads behind the car and in front of the wall, you, right. you have to take your time on that. There's yep. different variations you can throw. Navi throws one where they molly behind the wall and they nade the car position and they're ready for that fight. But if you throw the molly and you're expecting it to dissuade them, Gonna go for a poke and a prod exactly like that. So Hobbit with almost 30 kills here in regulation has been having a game of things. Oh, this great boost. boost it might come with the one way as well. There's a cheeky little one way that uh, they can deploy or he might just use it for an extinguished back of sight. So we'll, we'll wait and see how this one unfolds. I think this is a great call. When you've already got the man advantage, you put the fear of God in them. Done a lot of damage here. That's, that's good for one kill at least. And you've got your teammate beneath you as well, just taking the aggro from the pillar position. So they won't be using the one way. You can see Hobbit ready and waiting to deploy towards the mouth of the bomb site, which does make sense. And a flashbang play here. I think that is going to pop through and go for it. There's a smoke, though. Yeah, perfectly. It won't delay them here at the top of Banana with 40 seconds on the clock. That'll melt them down to at least the 25-second mark. And they've got Breeze towards top of middle. So he's got that control, at least. They, they could fall back, but what are they really going to do with it? They've got a Molotov and a smoke. They're leaving the bomb towards B for now. So Automatic is showing a bit of presence. Throws a smoke in towards Library, I believe, and we'll see whether this does anything for him. Shiro's coming, he's going to hear this, and uh, dead to rights, can start rotating on over now. Nafani is boosted, I don't think the flames are going to touch him here, and it might just be the save. That's 15 now for Cloud9. Out yeah, here. bit of an underwhelming round there, it was Hobbit taking the forward stance there towards the car position, gets a very clean kill, he falls back, they go for the boost. Pretty textbook stuff there, if you ask me. Didn't really make a dent, EG had hexed on low HP as well, so might as well play for the overtime situation. I'm curious how the desk are going to critique this match because it is currently a 15-12, maybe going to be a 16-12 scoreline. Yeah. Uh, close scenes, obviously had Cloud9 deciding to pick into the T-side start of this. Which was looking great. There was 7-1 up. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm interested to see what the... Like, I, I guess Yanko will, will find some reference points for Cirque here, who has been having a, a tough go of things. Breeze, though, he's showing some good form. 20-plus kills for him. So, yeah, look, uh, Dust 2 next. Mirage is the third. Well, that's, where, that's where Sark really has to step up, right? That This is not good enough. He's one of the absolute mainstay names of the squad. Been there a long time. Need huge performances from him. He's known for those AWP frags, the flicks, and causing massive amounts of damage, but just haven't seen it at all yet. We'll see whether EG can hold on. They haven't got much. Galil's a deagle for Neelan. 
So I'll come at 8k and there's a Molotov towards the quad. Flashing through as well, trying to pounce. Flashes are pretty decent. They're actually going to be wrapping and forcing the issue here. Enters with an up from position. Thinks better of it. I think that's the right call. Ooh, he almost got caught off guard there on multiple different occasions. Now the wrap is on in Axile. You haven't done a lot, but this your time bike. you can do everything and more. Stalled out now towards the short side apartments. The fight will have to come eventually here. Trying to spam him out of place, but it's Inters through the smoke who takes down Hex. This is just stopping before it gets started for EG. There's still a slight chance, I suppose, but with no utility, their options are very limited indeed. They just got to try and creep forward towards the site, but the CT seem to be very aware of that. Hobbit and Shiro working in tandem, and ladies and gentlemen, I think we're all done here. 16 to 12 in favor of Cloud9.